regular, regular, regular features. A regular, regular, regular features. A regular, regular, regular features. A regular features of shows. Hello, you, and welcome to Regular Features, the podcast that is the same every week. It's a podcast with three buds who love each other very dearly and won't say a bad word about each other while they're there. To my left and up a bit, it's Steve Hogarty. Hello. Hello, and how do you do? I'm marvellous. So thank you for asking, Steve. So few people ask back these days. What have you got for us? I've got absolutely freaking nothing for you. You no, know that. I you knew. Really put, yeah. <laughs> shone, you shone a hot little spotlight on me. You threw it You've under really the bus. Shown my full you, ass. You've shown my full ass to the, the podcast. And the spotlight reflected dazzlingly off your ass, and we're all very much in love with what we saw. You know how much Steve doesn't like buses, and yet you still threw him under that, one. That voice up there, unintroduced, yet still yapping away like a piece of shit, is Matt Lees. Is it? Is it Matt Lees? It's me. Hello. And uh, as always... There has been an incident in the playground, which we will be delving into and aiming to resolve as amicably as is possible. In in the current environment. Yes, exactly. we are three boys who love each other very much and will not hear a bad word said about each other. And John Logblight, what have you dug up from the... From oh, the, get off from my the, case, you dog what turd. Have you <laughs> what have you done? I'm only you joking. <laughs> I've um, rummaged around in the Google Docs and breathed life into an old fan Ooh. fiction video game. Did some document. dusty vintage Google Docs. Yeah. You've right. brought them up for a special occasion. It's like that BBC show. Is it the repair shop where they uh, they bring in an old go-kart and they repaint it and make an old man cry? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I hate go-karts. I, my wife was murdered by a go-kart. Why are you fucking bringing this to me? That we should we should mention up front that we three are the three members of the Regular Features podcast who did not go to a freaking kebab awards. Yeah. yeah. So, but we had the option. Um, we just looked at the pricing and realised it was going to cost the best part of it, like a grand, wasn't it? More yeah, than we a didn't, grand. We didn't get invited for free. No. Um, but if you came here this week looking for the amazing antics of Gav and Joe at the award ceremony, which were, they were considerable antics. Yeah, yeah they were still recovering um, from the awards, so they're not ready to podcast about it just yet. And it's um, going to be a great episode. I'm looking forward to it. I mean, this, this episode's good. Yeah. It's, yes. it's fine. It's not, it's <laughs> yeah. not up there, though, is but it? But we, we, we know what happened at the Kebab Awards, and I'm surprised that it hasn't been more broadly um, reported on by the wider kebab media. <laughs> and the thing is, Joe was doing jury duty that week as well, so I'm amazed that his final case wasn't what he did at the fucking Kebab Awards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> him having to, like, make the case for him and, like, Imagine that. that Star Trek episode where, where the queue continues and puts Picard on trial yeah. for the crimes of humanity. And he yeah. just has to run from the jury box to the stand every now and then. Can you <laughs> imagine that's yeah. some minority, sh- minority report shit, though. You turn up to do jury duty and it's like, yeah, you are there because you're being put on trial for something you're going to do at the end of the week. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah. Well, I, don't you know, just, I think you, you need to write that. just imploded my brain, Matt. <laughs> yeah, and I do I'm, that sometimes, I'm sorry. I'm actually here for that. Cool. I'm here for that. <laughs> I, mean, right? I was here for that too. I was there. Yeah, but we're all here, I think. Or are we? Oh. Yes. <gasps> he did it again! He fucking imploded my brain again! <laughs> Stop it! This is why we don't get invited to Kebab Awards. Because you're always thinking with your little brain, Matt. You're thinking Yeah, too I think much. about stuff too much. I annoy people. And yeah, it's just not good. No one wants me. <laughs> you're annoying. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's why you don't get invited. Trying to eat the kebab. kebab Stop awards. blowing my fucking it's brain up. It's frustrating to have a conversation Let me eat my fucking chip wrap, you <laughs> prick. Just a jelly boy I am made from gelatin Sometimes it makes me quite annoyed I can only jiggle and spin Met a doctor who walked past Said he had a range of cures Recommended a podcast Said it was called Regular Features Gap Joe not mad, Steve in my ear holes I did not dare hope for miracles 
my heart going boom, boom, boom. Then they said, Jelly boy, we're gonna give you bones. Yeah, some bones. Some jelly boy bones. How have you boys been? Ah, oh, dandy. Dandy as fuck, sir. How's the pub long? The pub's getting back on track. We've had a couple of nice weeks and, um,. Some busy weekday nights this week, so I honestly think people are getting so reckless that they're in their desire to get drunk that we are headed for disaster. <laughs> and I'm happy to preside over that. <laughs> did you um, loosen your mask mandate? Uh, w- we did loosen our masks to the point where they fell off, <laughs> and um, now we have got three ventilators around the pub. So you've got three ventilators, so you can intubate people. You can intubate what? people mid drink. I'll intubate you. I'll intubate you all. <laughs> okay, um, no, he's not having another GNT until after he's been intubated for at least an hour, all right? No, ventilation, ventilating so you've machines. Got, you've got which, big, great big fans blowing all of the air around in your pub, making it nice and safe for punters at the delightful King Billy Pub in Nottingham. Come to the King Billy Pub, the only pub that's just splashed a lot of money on things that people don't seem to care about. Sooner or later they will, though. They would drink in a hermetically sealed box for all they fucking care. Yeah. It is <laughs> It is weird watching like everything become this big, wibbly, like... Have you played that video game, The Fall Guys, where you're little weird jelly beans who just keep mm. falling into the water? And yes, played I, it. I played that when it first came out. And yeah, everyone played it when it came out. For a day. <laughs> it's silly. But anyway, like it's just that kind of like everyone just running back and forth between one platform to another and then the platform gets really wobbly one way and then everyone runs to the other one and no one ever just sort of stands roughly in the middle. It does seem That is just about. like my pub. You have been to the King of exactly. running upstairs. <laughs> Let's have a game of pool! <laughs> <laughs> People are always falling into oblivion in Log's pub because they didn't get onto the right tile in time. <laughs> but no, it seems like everyone's just gone, I'm sick of everything to do with being on the internet and I want to do everything in real life now, which is understandable, but everyone's just gone really full on to it but then i reckon we've got about four months before people go i'm sick of spending all this time doing things in physical person i can't be bothered give me the internet back i can assure you people are still posting on twitter that's true but those people are like it's like a sisyphian curse you're just trapped there like that you can't leave (laughs) guys guys don't diss twitter too much (laughs) <laughs> There's some really good hashtags lately. That's I've been in, I've been get, really getting into it. Throwback <laughs> Thursday. Uh, follow yeah. Friday. Follow, oh, fr- that, that follow Friday. <laughs> that is a throwback Thursday. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I had a guy start chatting to me the other day. He was like, he was like, just started chatting to me randomly um, about what he was doing, and he was like, he was like, I work in funding for eco projects, and he was this like posh man in his fifties. And he started talking to me and then asked, found out what I did and found out I did YouTube stuff. And he was like, oh, you, you've got to go to, have you been to Google's offices? They've got a whole YouTube studio. And I was like, yeah, I have been there once a long, long time ago. I was like, you've got to go down there. You've got to go, you've got to get in. They've got this big studio. And it was just like, Google, such a cool company. <laughs> that, was, that was the point where I was just like, I'm going to fucking, I can't keep. And that was when I was really thankful for having a mask on because I was just like, I cannot keep a straight face at this man telling me Google. What about this company, Google? Such a, such a <laughs> cool company. <laughs> it sounds silly, doesn't it? I mean, what Google? Sounds like bloody really googly eyes. What's wrong with you lads? But no, they're actually quite good. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's going to be quite a big deal, you know. Oh, let's have a fucking feature. Oh, what is your fucking feature? Just give me a fucking feature. Please tell me your fucking feature. Oh, regular features, regular features. Here's one now. That's the only thing I've done. I had a conversation with a guy who was a bit of a wanker. Apart from that, I've just uh, had loads of IBS. And I've got rid of most of that now. And, uh, Is that a new band? Yeah, it's great. Fantastic. Got all their albums. <laughs> <laughs> Clumpy and the shits. Um, having a bad time. Uh, <laughs> that's volume three. What, what are their B-sides? Eventual sploosh. <laughs> God, I'm clogged. Is, uh, is it the probably most popular? That's their Dutch, B-side. sorry, into Dutch rock there. Yeah. <laughs> they worked with Eno on that one. Mm-hmm. Brian Eno. Not, not Eno's Eno. <laughs> or... Or the balsamic salts. <laughs> balsamic doesn't describe medicine you take for your stomach, does it? <laughs> it might do. No. Depends. I imagine people who believe in like natural remedies probably just drink a pint of balsamic vinegar to react to most problems in life, right? Why is it called balsamic vinegar? Is it come from some uh, some place called balsam? It's, also, it's made with a distillation of Alberto balsam hair conditioner. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> is it filtered through? Uh, 
lots of balsa wood or MDF. It's filtered through that's 15 all, that's meters of MDF. To MDF get would absorb a lot before it started trickling out again. <laughs> Log, could you please Google balsamic and see what it means? Balsamic. What does it mean? That's a voice recommendation software. This in itself is like is like a fictional podcast. What does it mean with log? What does it mean? Well, we ask log to Google things. <laughs> you are not going to enjoy this. Oh. Does it come from the balsa wood region of Italy? Of the nature of or yielding balsam or relating to balsamic vinegar. I mean, <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> balsamic means relating to balsamic vinegar. Get well, a tit. Yeah, like Get a, a what, tit, you stupid internet. Well, what's, what is, what's a, what's a fucking balsam? fucking tit, you internet. <laughs> <laughs> right, sorry, I'm going to wait for you, Log, to... Can you, can you click yeah. on every link on that page until you figure out what the fuck balsam like, what's is? What's a balsam? I know what why a Balzac is, is. Why? <laughs> why is vinegar called balsamic? Balsamic vinegar actually derives its name from the word balm, rooted in the Latin balsamum. It's balsamum! <laughs> get with it! Yeah, get out! <laughs> East, which refers to an aromatic resin or odour, as well as a substance that soothes, relieves, or heals. Well, so it's soothing vinegar, so they made it what like is- this big black goop that you'd soothe yourself with. Perhaps you, perhaps you can use it to heal a wound, or just to... Gunk it up so the blood stops flying out. Is this one of these things well, you're not really supposed to eat? Like we just eat it now and think it's delicious, but actually it was not. It's not for that. I yeah, don't... you're supposed to put it on gunshot wounds. <laughs> but someone, someone kissed their own gunshot wound and said, "This will be great on freaking chips. <laughs> really tasty. This that gunshot wound's delicious. Stop it's, eating the gunshot it's wounds. Really annoying because <laughs> now they always put it in those bottles where like it only drips out in little tiny bits. So when you've been shot, it's like fucking hell. Like you're just there shaking it, just oh. trying to get a bit more out. Mm. It's like, oh yeah, I love when I buy a white wine vinegar with a screw top, and I go, oh no, I've run out of balsamic, and I try to like daintily pour a little bit of the white wine vinegar on my right. chips yeah. and it goes all over the chips and I go oh no but inside I'm like, oh yes <laughs> now I have to cover them in more salt <laughs> more for me <laughs> I've been naughty again I made a do we, we do some features I made like, chutney for the first time the other day <laughs> alright okay let's do some features let's do some features <laughs> Features. The regular features. These are the episodes of the Regular Features podcast. Their continuing mission to find a feature worth repeating. To seek out new features and regular features. To boldly feature where no feature had featured before. Regular featured before. Regular features! Regular features! Regular features! Regular features! Regular features! Just regular features! Regular features! features! Regular features. Regular features. You are Sultan Leroy, ambassador of the playground for the big kids. Can you collect all of the children and put them all on the right kinds of swings or slides? <laughs> right. Collectively, you are you are Sultan Leroy. Sultan Leroy. The first stop on your illustrious junket is the ball pit. Sniffy Bonson, age six, is warbling on his back, trying to sink himself into an early plastic-based grave, whilst Hannah McBlutie, age seven, has declared herself Regent Queen of Eastern Bulbaria, having collected all of the green-coloured plastic balls into one corner of the pit and then propping them in place by building a sort of wall out of far smaller children who now form an actively quite regularly DMZ. Mmm. As Sultan Leroy... Ambassador of the playground for big kids, you do not recognise this false regency and also cannot allow Sniffy Bonson, age six, to bury himself in plastic balls when it will soon be time to return home with his mother, age 38, to eat fish fingers and mashed potatoes with peas, age unknown. So 
You begin <laughs> rummaging around in your big bag of edicts, and now it's time for you to decide which of your edicts you will unfurl for these two unruly dissidents. I love an now, electronic dict. <laughs> the edict of bedtime. The edict of home time. The edict of don't do that, you'll spoil your dinner. The edict of stop it, just stop it. The edict of why don't we have a go on the swings? The edict of I've heard that because someone's been good, they might be allowed to have an ice cream. Or the edict of death. Ooh, I like the edict of... Why don't we go over there? The, the most suggestive edict. <laughs> like... what, what? The edict of, why don't we go and have a go on the swings? Yeah, that's what yeah, I want. But I'd like Steve to have a, a say. Um, I, yeah, no, I, the, the swings was what I, that drew me like straight away. I was drawn to the swings because I think that's part of my personality. It's, it's a distraction I'm, that we I'm, get. I'm yeah. uncertain what is being skewered or parodied. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, well, I'm not going to question it. Let's, let's, let's continue. Let's go to the swings. Go to the swings. Okay, so as you unfurl the edict and begin to read it, a crowd gathers to witness the administration of playground justice. Bobby Plorks, aged four, is spellstruck by your words, keeping one finger up his nose for balance. And thus, it is as such recognised by the kingdom of Big Playground. Beatrix Perflant, aged four, rolls her eyes at the stoic clomp of your prose. The younger generation so often have no respect for our traditions. They don't recall the state of the sandpits back in the before times. As you muse on the horrors of broken rope swings and shit-caked metal slides, you suddenly come to a stark realisation. You have accidentally just read out... The Edict of Death. Oh, oh shit. no. We had no control over that. that yeah, was that was a crafty nice. little choosing your adventure tactic, that is. <laughs> Tommy Poppins, aged four, and Sarah Plum, three, arrive in the ceremonial plastic car, a chubby legs motoring away to drag the unpowered vehicle into position. A small nod from Mr. Poppins, aged four, and the pair are bundled into the back of the plastic car. Sniffy Bonson... Age six remains unfazed throughout the process. Out of it was Hannah McBlutey, age seven, but almost eight, seven and three quarters, really, exploded with all the sputtering violence of any failed state when faced with a coup. When the failed state was just a bit of a ball pit and the despot in question was a seven-year-old girl. There's a lot of loud complaining, basically, as the plastic car, now too full to make room for other passengers or its previous drivers, is pushed across the bouncy fake tarmac, its chunky wheels spinning in most directions as the prisoners are shunted and bumped away. What a grave mistake you have made so early in the day. What a broad waste of such a powerful edict. When the teenagers start smoking cigarettes on the swings, what then? You might bribe them away with the ice cream temporarily. They'll surely return to play the same trick again. Consequence begetting consequence, the classic raspberry ripple effect in action. <laughs> but there still remains hope. Can you, <laughs> Sultan Leroy, ambassador of the playground for the big kids, admit that you have made such a serious mistake? Can you lay down your badge and gun, call off the execution you have incorrectly ordered? Are you willing to accept the blow to your integrity, the possibility of losing your job, your livelihood, by standing up now and admitting your error and calling off this impending mob justice? No, no, I'm committed to this. But also, I do think that Raspberry Ripple is less a metaphor for causality than it is the multiverse. <laughs> just just to draw you up on the Raspberry Ripple, me Ripple metaphor, Matt. That's fair. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> uh, no, we've, we've got edicts to spare. I mean... Well, we may have... We've still got to get people to go on the swings. Yeah, and and also, who loses their nerve that quickly after a f an edict that doesn't land the way you, you are want quite it to? right? So no Roy, ambassador at all. Ambassador of the playground for the big kids will not admit such a mistake. Your error will go unknown. There will be more children. There will be more times they are bandied away, and that is that. <laughs> there will be more children. <laughs> the dinner bell rings, and it is time for you, Sultan Leroy, aged forty-three to return home. Your work 
is done. Was I the headmaster all along? That was the adventure of Sultan Leroy, ambassador of the playground for the big kids. I hope you had a good time. Did you make the right choices? Who knows? Hopefully you did. Thanks for playing. I love it. Um, I get. A, I watch a lot of films where I got out of it thinking I don't know what the point was, but I fucking enjoyed that. And most films, <laughs> that's how I feel. I liked some of the effects, and I enjoyed the phrase "stoic clomp." <laughs> so it's all like, <laughs> yeah, you can take away what you want from that, and um, you come away with something different to everyone else. I enjoyed that's, I the early on, Log, uh, Steve, when you said, "Oh, you know, I can't work out what this is parodying or skewering," and it's like, yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's not. It's not. It's just. It's a, I thought it was like, a, <laughs> is it a COP twenty six thing? Of it's <laughs> just, just fucking nonsense. <laughs> just, just fucking nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it is. Regular features, 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 regular features. Um, you know that feeling when you haven't got any ideas, so you just. Scrolling so you write, you write through four minutes about Sultan Leroy, ambassador of the playground for the big kids. Yeah, no, that, that, no that, that felt like part of a, a well crafted universe that you, <laughs> you, you know more about that than we do. And that's why it resonated so truly <laughs> because all, all of those characters were fully fleshed out in your head. But my, my thing, I was just going back and um, looking at ideas I might have had in the past. And turns out, I found a document that I did not know whether I'd done on regular features before. So I think I thought I'd read out the first one and you could tell me, have you heard this before? Because <laughs> I can't remember it. Oh, uh, I've just seen the document that you've shared and I, I, I do remember it and I cannot remember if it's ever been said on this podcast before. No, well, I, like I did the, the same thing. You have the opposite to me with Google Docs and the fact that you just seem to have this treasure trove of google docs that you're you just haven't you've written and then not touched whereas i always think i've got that i'm always like yeah i've got that whole thing i wrote and then i actually find it and it's like it's a google doc <laughs> with three words and that's it's it a, it's just like and then no. three words and then two sp- two new lines then a question mark yeah, <laughs> just right it's like i'm like oh, but i've got all these great ideas i wrote down and it's like you've just written the word dinosaurs on a piece of paper or like when oh, I, that, that is a good idea feature. though like when i turned up for that life feature and i just had the word brie written on a piece of paper or something and that was it and you wove magic out of that. I did not. I wove, I wove deep sympathy. That was that was a connection I formed with that audience who stared at a broken man on the stage who had a piece of paper with oh, that was it. three written on it. We weaved magic out of it by hugging you, a man on the verge of a breakdown. <laughs> that was a lovely period because sometimes I'd turn up to those things kind of frazzled and, and weave this kind of strange buzzing energy that would turn into something great. And sometimes I'd just turn up and have a minor mental breakdown down. Um, so it, it was kind of like a variety show in that regard, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> well, Log, you and I have Google Docs going back to about 2008, I think. Yes. We shared Google Docs that we worked together on when we should have been doing PC Zone work. I think but this we one. Were writing precisely what you're about to read out. I think this one was, may have been for PC Zone. There's a, the the one that I've linked, I've written some new ones for this one because I wanted to make sure that there was some new content in case it has been run out. But okay, I'll read the first one. This one is called Tomb Raider. And I'm going, this is one this one's just a straight um, monologue, so there's no script here. But there are some scripts coming up, so um hold on for them. <laughs> I'm going to kiss a man today, Henry, said Tomb Raider, as she pulled the thermometer out of her peacock's mouth. Henry, her peacock, which should be obvious from the context, don't make me spell everything out for you for Christ's sake, had been feverish for weeks, and he wasn't eating his sandwiches. Yes, Henry, I'm going to kiss a man today right on the lips, she shouted. Then I'm going to pull his trousers down with a grappling hook and push his balls around the room until I solve the puzzle of his cock. Henry made a very loud peacock sound that startled Tomb Raider into the bath. Henry! giggled Tomb Raider, and they both laughed until it was bedtime. Tomb Raider wiped her clothes off with a napkin and went to bed. She never did kiss that man, but she'd had a lovely night anyway. <laughs> oh, that's that's nice. unrealistic, is it? <laughs> that's good. A bit of fanfic. Yeah. Classic game FAQs. 
No, they don't put that stuff on game FAQs, do they? It's it's puzzle walkthroughs. No. <laughs> <laughs> Not smutty fan fiction. Astonishingly yeah. well crafted ASCII been, walkthroughs. Like, that would have changed the nature of looking for tips on games back in the day of having to like yeah. navigate through the links carefully. Like you know, is this going to help me beat this boss, or is this going to be like me put on a list for Sonic fanfic again? I only use game facts for when a character says, "Will you give me ten pennies, please?" And I have to look up to see whether they're just a scam artist, or if I give them ten pennies, they will give me something. But I will not be fucking taken in by an NPC, <laughs> <laughs> even if it's fun—a fun thing to happen oh, in you, the game. You think that's fun? Walking it's past been- someone that you can't actually fucking exact revenge on because you can't attack them with your sword in the cities <laughs> no it's no, not fun it's <laughs> not fun for log <laughs> so do you remember that do you remember having heard that before no that is new to me excellent i mean it rings a bell but i've no idea there's been there's been a lot of uh features throughout the years if i'm honest that have involved you talking about the tomb raider um, yeah and, and the splinter cell people doing kisses in your features, yeah. General but do you remember Hen- but, but Henry the Peacock? He's a new character. I <laughs> believe new. that Henry the new, Peacock. Yeah. If I'd heard about him, he would have re- had a resurgence. He would have had like a kind of uh, he would be kind of like big boys level canon. I believe if we had, mm. had him knocking around. So it's probably it's probably fresh. But it does make me realise that actually a lot of your features are just about a small set of characters meeting up and then having kisses. Like you are playing with dolls. Nice oh, way, speaking like. of which, the next one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you should see my fucking real life tiny regular features dolls that I make do all sorts of nasty shit. Do you want to come to my house for chips and sausages? Yes, please. Let's fuck. <laughs> oh, let's go up this big cavern inside log. Ooh, we're exploring potholes. Anyway, next one is called Sonic the Hedgehog's Gloves. And this one's a script, so um, if you couldn't mind reading it out, all your relevant bits. Hello, Amy. You might have to do that. Say that again once he's opened yeah. the document. Yeah, I, I I was looking for it, but I couldn't find the thing. I found it. Mini fanfics, mini fanfics, mini fanfics. Okay, I'm here. Hello, Amy. Sorry, I've only just realised that rather than writing the names, it just says Matt B. Amy. <laughs> so I like it. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Amy. Hello, Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> Hello, Amy. Have you seen my white gloves? I want to pop my head through a circle and wag my finger at some evil children. And for that, I need my white finger-wagging gloves. Oh no, I put them in the washing machine with a big human turd from the real world. And now they're all disgusting. (laughs) Amy! Why are you putting big, real human turds into the washing machine? It is a philosophical endeavor. Oh, yes, you're working on that treaties, aren't you? Yes, that's correct, Sonic. It's for a serious thing. Well, without giving away your findings, would you care to share the results? I found out one thing. Do go on, Amy. I found out... I don't want you touching my tits with those gloves on! Hello, everybody! It's me, the Eggman! Hi, it's the Eggman! Oh, Eggman! I love, I love the, the guy! Egg. Oh my god, he's one of these the best. He's uh, absolutely. The best egg. I love this guy. I like him, he's my favorite. Oh, 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 oh. Anyway, like always, I'm going around telling everyone I want to put my hands in a pair of gloves that are just thick with shit! Go on. Yeah, I want to feel that mud squelch against my vestigial finger webbing. And all I've got is this disappointingly clean pair of white gloves. Imagine my dismay. Wait a minute. Are those finger wagging gloves? <laughs> Why, yes. Now you mention it, I think they are. Oh, what a stroke of luck. Now I can wag my finger so hard at those evil children, they'll really wonder what they've done wrong. And I can give a real stinky ovation to my local Shakespeare company. (gasps) Whoa! No, Dr. Ackman, he's down in the kitchen. He's the best. I love you, Ackman. What a cool cat. 
Well, that log, I'm sorry to say, is quite clearly just straight plagiarism from the Sonic the Hedgehog cartoon. You didn't well, write that. I will say your voices were magnificent. Well, I, I did voice Amy in the original cartoon, so this is why I recognise the script. <laughs> Well, um, I, I, can't, I can't say that I could be more happy with that because I couldn't be more happy with that. <gasps> Thank nice. God I worked that one out properly before I said it. <laughs> but anyway, now it's time for Assassin's Creed. Whoa. Whoa. Spooky God, You're really Halloween going through the music. mid-noughties hits here. Yeah. It was night time and Assassin's Creed was dangling off a gutter. He knew there was a feather around here somewhere and Assassin's Creed was trying to collect enough feathers to tickle Lucretia Borgia to death. Meanwhile, Samus Aran had just had a shower and wrapped in a towel she opened her window only to see Assassin's Creed's groin just dangling there. She tapped a button on her helmet which popped up her visor and she rolled her eyes. Men, she said, and did a shine spark on his balls, which made him spunk out a purple triple shot that opened a nearby door, which led to a big vault full of clues to a mystery. You walked right into my trap, said Sherlock Holmes, smoking a fat cigar. Now all the clues to every mystery ever are mine. He lifted up a clue, scrutinised it for a second and laughed. So that's where all the Watson jizz in my mouth comes from, he chuckled and spat a pint of beige fluid onto the floor. This looks like a job for me, bellowed Mrs. Mop from the 1983 ZX Spectrum game by Tina Billet. But where's your mop? shouted Assassin's Creed from outside the window. But instead of answering, Mrs. Mop just scooped up palmful after palmful of jizz and ate it with her mouth. But that's how you get pregnant in your neck, said Samus Aran. But it was too late. Mrs. Mop was vomiting up thousands of hungry Horaces. <laughs> to be continued. <laughs> this, this, that was less of a script and more of like a, just a dissociation. Um... Well, you've got but to pack all the it. characters in to broaden the appeal. Yeah. Mm, that's going to get in the, the hung, yeah. Hungry Horace fans. It was like the, watching a Marvel film, but for video games. <laughs> Very much Endgame that was, yes. Oh, anyway, I, my plan is that I think the hurry Hungry Horaces, thousands of Hungry Horaces are going to eat at the um, fabric between universes. It's going to be a real multiverse. Oh, like the Langoliers. Mm. <laughs> yes! Yes. Yes. Why is that the second time I've heard the fucking word Langoliers today? I there's no reason for anyone to say that word, and I've heard it twice now. Hello, this is Steve talking to you from the future. You're probably thinking, Log, somebody mentioned the Langoliers to you because Dean Stockwell just died, and he starred in the 1995 TV adaptation of the Langoliers, but we actually recorded this episode three days before Dean Stockwell sadly passed away for which we are very sorry if if our psychic attention to him and speaking about him tangentially through the Langoliers caused him to uh, sadly, sadly die. That that apology is not any sort of admission of guilt. Um, I don't think it would stand up in court. Uh, For example, let's say, oh, I hope the Queen breaks her back or something like that. And that happens between me recording this on November the 10th and it going out uh, no court in the land could could hang me for that um, it would just be circumstance, coincidence pomp and bluster anyway, back to the podcast what the hell is a langolier? a langolier is a Stephen King creation they, they gobble up time and if you get trapped in the past they'll come for you <laughs> I thought you were going to be like, and if you get trapped in the past, it's your own fault. It's your own fucking <laughs> fault. I'm not going to come and get you. Flying through a rift in time. Man. I love oh, that. You're right. I love how um, monsters come and get you in really sort of like sort of certain situations. A really terrifying situation that constantly is preying on my mind is that I might get stuck in the past and then get preyed upon by langoliers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if it's not bad enough that you're stuck in the past. <laughs> A big fucking ball sack's gonna come along and gobble you up. <laughs> Are they ball sacks? They're basically ball sacks. <laughs> basically ball sacks, my favourite Ben and Jerry's flavour. <laughs> <laughs>
Excellent. <laughs> and the this this the second B on the basically and then the, the ball sacks B is like is it's like Oh it's hairy, hairy. this hair's ball coming sacks. off the yeah. 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 Hairy balls. Hairy basically ball sacks. That's pretty sick. Um, that's, that's grace. That's will and grace that. Thank you. What? <laughs> that's grace. I said that's grace. <laughs> nice <laughs> OT. Here's another quick one. Wacka wacka, said Fozzy the Bear, tracing his tongue along Pac-Man's lips. Wacka wacka wacka, replied Pac-Man enthusiastically. Fozzy froze. Are you fucking taking the piss out of my voice? Wacka wacka wacka, said Pac-Man, urgently trying to convey that he couldn't say anything else, and he was only originally attracted to Fozzy because he thought the bear had made the effort to learn his language. Fuck you, man, said the, said the sensitive bear, and kicked Pac-Man into a goal, winning the match from Real Madrid in a nearby game of FIFA. <laughs> Nice quick one. Nice quick one for you there. <laughs> Delicious. That's true. Fozzy says waka waka. <laughs> and Pac-Man says waka waka. It is. What if they were ever to meet? And now we know. Now we know. Oh, oh what if they met Wacker from Final Fantasy X? <laughs> oh. But he doesn't say Wacker. He doesn't walk around going Wacker Wacker like a Pokemon. But that no, but... feels like a piece of art which should <laughs> exist, like a picture of Fozzie Bear and Pac-Man and Wacker from just all uh, three characters together as a portrait. As a kind of like that feels like a meme that should exist. Yeah, that should be like like a gamer T-shirt. I'm sure that's cool because like Wacker is one, and Fozzie Bear is Wacker Wacker. And whacka whacka whacka. It's traditionally one, two, three, isn't it? Yeah. Those oh, those wow. guys have a hier- hierarchy. I want to see them on a bronze, silver, and gold plinth. I feel like <laughs> we're we're not far off developing a new numerical system. Oh yeah. There's definitely a graph, a, a whacka graph, on which all those three characters <laughs> can exist. if you will. <laughs> Who will be the first to go whacka 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 whacka? Oh Jesus Christ. This one's a, uh, well, no, not, but that's that's the kind of the numerical system I'm working on. It's like it's more simplistic. So a whacker, 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 whacker would be a whacker and a Pac Man. It would be like instead of like the Roman numerals, right? It would right, be okay. like IV, it would be like yeah, whacker yeah. from Final Fantasy X and a Pac Man. Uh, Log, what's the next one? <laughs> I'll send you some diagrams, Steve. Don't worry about it. I'll send you some diagrams. <laughs> this one was in the document, and I'm fairly sure we've done this. So feel free to say, stop. We've done this log, as long as you can tell me the episode it's from when you do so. And this one's called Splinter Cell's New Hat. Give me a nice hat, please, Sonic the Hedgehog, said Splinter Cell. All the nice hats are in the back, said Sonic, nodding solemnly. Nice hats? Well, that sounds like the kind of hat that I'm after, said Splinter Cell, and he did the splits at the thought of having a hat on his head. Stop right there, spoiler cell. First you must undergo three tasks, one of which is sexy. Okay, said Splinter Cell. As long as it's a bowler hat. Bowler hats are my favourite too, but unfortunately for you, it is a top hat, said Sonic the Hedgehog. But fortunately for you, on the other hand, the first test was how good is your taste in hats, so you've already passed the first test, which should make this a little bit shorter, unless I keep talking forever, which is a real possibility because I am a total chatterpuss. <laughs> I was going to say, continued Splinter Cell, I would only be willing to do two tests for a top hat, so I'll just pretend that test never happened. That wasn't the sexy test, though, said Sonic. That will be... The final test. <laughs> Splinter Cell hid under a table for two minutes while Sonic jumped on a television. Now it's time for your second test! A wall opened up and a secret passageway into the shop's storeroom opened up. Splinter Cell frowned like he had seen a nice baby and was not sure if he wanted one himself. There are no hats here. And there never were, according to one of my goggles. He pointed to one of his goggles which had a picture of a hat and a question mark on it. That was the second test. This is not and never was a hat shop. Now it is time for the final test. The sexy test. Are you ready, Splinter Cell? I am ready, Sonic the Hedgehog. Although I'm no longer sure that this will end up in me getting a hat. Speaking as a Sonic the Hedgehog, I hate the monarchy, so we are going to cover rubber jotties and chocolate and post them to the Queen. <laughs> she will eat them, and it will be in the news that the Queen ate a rubber jotty. <gasps> Let's do this. 
fucking yes. What a beautiful story. And, and I think and I wrote that years ago, but the, now we've done it. If the Queen actually dies uh, between us recording and publishing this, it's going to actually look like we did it. Well, we posted Johnny's to her covered in chocolate. And she wolfed them down like died. a greedy queen. Mm. <laughs> then gagged for, for the record, the Queen is alive right now. And we haven't posted the Johnny's. Yeah, we story haven't yet, posted, but we're yeah. about to. <laughs> so. I reckon Nicholas Witchell's gonna fucking do a savage expose on this episode. Of this. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah, I enjoyed that. Like, I'm sorry. All I'm voice. saying is, that if the Queen dies, she choked on a Johnny. Uh, I to get out there. <laughs> that's all we're saying. Yeah, that's what we're saying. At, at the bottom, at the bottom of that um, thing is. Do you want to read the one, the one you wrote, Steve? The Rockstar Table Tennis. Oh, oh yeah. There are two, I've just <laughs> read it. It's on this great. Google Doc that I wrote. This one's called Rockstar Table Tennis. <laughs> By Stephen. By Stephen. Batting that ball around sure is hard work, exclaimed Beryl who by this point had no clothes on at all. <laughs> Such a... The shortest porn. It's like it. baby shoes, but for tits. <laughs> I've got another one. Yeah. There's a Max Payne There's a Max Payne one. Can I read that one? Yeah, of course you can. Yeah, yeah. Log, can you be the superintendent? Yes, I can be. Matt, you can be the police officer. <laughs> Certainly. <laughs> okay. Have you seen Max Payne? Asked the superintendent. No, Sarge, <laughs> replied the police officer. <laughs> I cannot find him, <laughs> remarked the superintendent. The superintendent looked in the break room. Max Payne was not there. The superintendent looked behind the plant. Max Payne was not there. The superintendent looked under the desk. Max Payne was not there. I simply cannot find Max Payne, he said. Finally, the superintendent looked behind the tractor. There's Max Payne. I was behind the tractor the whole time, laughed Max Payne. The end. <laughs> I like the fact that after the first one, when you said the superintendent looked in the break room, Max Payne was not there. You left a gap, and I assumed you were leaving that gap so you could play a little... Little, 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 little sound effect like they do in all these <laughs> kids looking for things. <laughs> I might do that. Yeah. You know, they used to say that Rockstar Games had like a file on everybody. Or they, they used to say Rockstar Games' PR had a, had a file on every journalist. And yeah. They, like they would go they through it book. to like to see whether or not you were going to be allowed to review or come to an event. And I just, I am, I'd like to imagine that if that's true, that it's just in Steve's file, it's just a printout of this sheet of A4 of these two stories. <laughs> regular, 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 Well, that's it for this week's episode of the Regular Features Podcast. Thank you for listening. And if you would like to support the podcast, you can go to patreon.com forward slash a regular features to help us out by donating an amount of your choosing per episode it helps us make the podcast it helps us get along as friends who like to do a podcast together and in return nothing, nothing tests a friendship more than not having money to tolerate each other <laughs> i need to be paid to see log <laughs> on a on a weekly frequency which is more than i see most of my Actual friends. I <laughs> know. <laughs> really. <laughs> Don't say really. I was joking. I'm not wait, I'm not winding it back. You're not going to make a fucking idiot out of me, Steve. Fucking wow. Hell. Okay. This is why I moved to Nottingham, because of you pulling shit like this. Yeah, well, yeah. You not never fucking Steve, visit, do you? You will not be made a goon of. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You will not make a goon out of me tonight. <laughs> hey, if you support us to the tune of two pounds an episode, you get... A couple of cool little gifts. You get access to the Beehive, which is our patron-exclusive Discord, where all sorts of fun things go down <clears throat> lately. Kebab chat. and uh, We do need to apologise for the lack of kebab chat in tonight's episode, because I think some people are expecting yeah, kebab. Yeah, I think so. Date. They're going to be really, really quite pissed yes. off. Well, if you I want to have get- kebab chat, go to the Discord. That's where it's all kicking off. You also get your very own Bee name that's mm. right we will 
transact your existing human name for a bona fide certified B name. Please give a B name to Mike Bell. Ding dong, that's a bosun. And it's like B-O-Z-Z-I-N, like little line. Ding dong, that's a bosun. It's not really a name. But no, it's great. No, I, I I was stuck thinking about how to work campanology in there, and then making it a camp joke, and I I, I was going down loads of dead ends. <laughs> <laughs> you get too in your head about the bean names, log. Well, I do, and then I was thinking appealing. My bell is appealing. <laughs> it's like and then that's not got B in it. <laughs> Just... Yeah. Well, was that meant to be a count like a counter to me saying you get too in your head about it? No, no sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Please give a B name to <laughs> Emily Janik Dotes. <laughs> Just to clarify, that's <laughs> Emily Janik Dotes. Yes, yes, yes. Emily Janik Dotes. Give her a B name now. Royally, Eef. Royal Jellic Dotes. Royal Jellic Dotes. I love it. Eef, that's really good. I was going Thanks. for B Wellington. <laughs> Just B Wellington. <laughs> Actually, fuck it. That's the next one. Cut that out. The next person's going to be called B. Fwellington. <laughs> I like it. What's, f- what's, f- what's Fwellington? It doesn't matter. Well, it's just moving the F from B. Fwellington into the word Wellington. <laughs> I've already written it in, so it's done. It's in the document. Please give a B name to Stephen Wyatt. B. Fwellington. <laughs> That's incredibly strong. <laughs> That's, yeah. You don't. You don't get. You don't get me saying things confidently very, in one's very often, if at all. But Beef Wellington, I will intone. Bloody it. Beef Wellington, you have you've walked away with a doozy of a B name right now. <laughs> you don't even know how good you've got it, Mister Wellington. <laughs> Your B is here. <laughs> and finally, please give a B name to Floppy Clock. Tim S. Honey. Excellent. That's what I like to hear. A B name. <laughs> <laughs> if you'd like your own B name, you can go to patreon.com forward slash regular features and help us out. Even if you don't like, wouldn't like your own B name and you just want to help us make the podcast, um, it'd be great if you could do that and just donate what you can per episode to help us out. Or you could just tell your mother to tell her yeah. friends to tell her cousins. Yeah. But your cousin's to knitting circles to this podcast. Are, oh no, I, th- I, mean, I think your mum's cousin's knitting circles are exactly the audience I'm trying to reach. I just, I've got no idea how to get at them legally. I think we really need to start a multi-level marketing scheme about getting people on board the regular features band like a... mm-hmm. <laughs> Just tell five people, and then within thirteen generations, everyone on Earth will listen. <laughs> <laughs> it will be mandated. We'll be back next week with another episode of the podcast good night and good luck yeah it is a podcast isn't it it's a fucking podcast out there <laughs> yeah now go on you've got you've got loads more in your feed go and listen to one of them or listen to us again from the beginning go back to fucking episode one it's time <laughs> no 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 <laughs> Cheers.